Okay, I can see I need to make this a little easier to understand. It was the solar flares that took out various communication, data, and satellite networks yesterday. I had thought I made a good enough case in our two previous videos, but I see I need to do better. So, let me put the nail in the coffin, end the story, finalmente. So, the three things you are hearing online are hacking, an AT&T software update, or the solar flares. Now, first things first. When the government is saying hacking, AT&T is saying it was a software update, and the news is giving a mix of those depending on what channel you're watching, that should be a huge red flag. They are scrambling, panicked that you're going to realize it was the sun, and they can't get their story straight. The fact that the least trustworthy sources, the government, news, and corporations, are saying either hacking or software update should probably give you pause. Let's go ahead and take that a step further. The fact that it was widespread is a huge clue, and first, initially, debunks AT&T's story about a software update. It doesn't yet debunk the hacking, but we'll get to that. So folks, the news was only focusing on AT&T, but it was so much more than that. And while some secondary cellular networks do use AT&T towers, many of these were not at all related to AT&T or even cellular networks. There is simply no way that a software update within AT&T did all of this. That doesn't even make sense. Look at all of these. If you trust big corporations, you've got other problems. But if you see all of this and still think that it was a software update from one company, please contact your local psychiatrist. Now, the most critical among those is the impact to the satellites. The GO-16 went offline during the last flare. Starlink took a big hit as well. And those two are where this vector makes the hacking virtually impossible. No, the ghost satellite cannot be hacked all the way out there, way beyond low Earth orbit. And when you see how widespread this was, it does make the hacking option extremely unlikely. But I'm not done. The selectivity of the outages, something naysayers were pointing out, is actually the best reason to think it was the solar flares. Not just selective of some networks and not other networks, but some people in the same house on the same family cell phone plan had half the house phones go down and the others work fine. If it was hacking or a software issue, it would have taken out everything in specific regions. I hope you can understand that. Now, furthermore, on the selectivity, think about lightning. If one person in a crowd got hit and died, you wouldn't say, oh, well, how did the lightning just selectively target that one person and ignore everyone else? We'd all look at you like a moron. Same goes for lightning not hitting the same place twice. You would never expect the same exact networks to go down in consecutive solar storms. Now, if you can understand how lightning is selective and random, especially from storm to storm, that is the exact same type of electromagnetic impact from space weather. But it is not what you would see with software trouble or hacking, where everything would go down and there would be no selectivity whatsoever. Similar things could be said about car crashes or fingerprints. You wouldn't say, oh, well, why didn't every car crash? Or why is the damage different in this crash versus that crash? Or why aren't his fingerprints like her fingerprints? Sounds dumb, doesn't it? Well, when you understand electromagnetic activity, those selectivity arguments against solar flares are exactly that dumb. That selectivity is exactly how space weather works, just like that's how lightning works. And in fact, this is another thing that debunks the hacking and software issue options. Lastly on this front, the timing. The first two flares did cause a flurry of those events, but about half of the ones I showed you earlier in this video were not from those first two flares. They were from the last flare more than 12 hours later. So what, the software update was fixed and then broke again? Or the hack happened and then it got a second win several hours later after it was initially quashed? Were your parents first cousins or something? This is easy. It was the sun. If you can't understand the facts I have just shared with you here, you probably don't belong on the internet. Now, in those previous videos, which are listed below, I shared how this flare disruption impacts technology, but here's something that might help a little more. In addition to the global electric circuit, there is also the high-altitude X-ray-driven EMP.
This applies to high-altitude nuclear blasts, obviously, but also to solar flare X-ray ionization. This was one of the biggest papers of 2021, and it can help you understand a little bit more of the multi-pronged process of space weather disruption. Lastly, I'm seeing a lot of observers mistaking the space weather timing of different elements of solar activity. So below you have three key space weather events, solar flares, energetic particle storms, and CME driven geomagnetic storms in the KP index. How long they take to arrive on Earth or onset, and how long the disruption can last. If you are really solid on space weather stuff, you know this already, and if you're not, I implore you to check out the space weather learning playlist also linked below. As of now, I will entertain no more of this hacking or software update nonsense. If you can't get your head right on this, you probably don't belong here. Yes, that harshness is required. Things are getting very serious, and you can't be screwing up on things like this. End of story. We'll see you in the morning.